Um, I want to give a tiny bit of context uh, to this interview. I want to explain why I did this interview and, and how this interview came to be. Uh, Logan Paul has had an outsized impact on the YouTube community. His actions affect the entire community and while this is true of, of all big creators, Logan Paul in, in general and the size of his audience have amplified the consequences of his bad decisions. Um, there was a sense of, of shame and embarrassment around a lot of the YouTube community after the Suicide Forest video and, and all of the, the fallout from the negative press because of the Suicide Forest video. Um, and in the aftermath of that, Logan did some interviews and Logan released some videos explaining himself, but I know that I was left with a lot of questions. Questions about his intent and why he did what he did and, you know, he still has this enormous audience on YouTube. What are his plans? What are his intentions moving forward? Um, so a couple of weeks ago when he contacted me about a documentary he's, he's currently making about his life on YouTube, I obviously had a lot of questions, but I told him that I would be willing to do the interview for his documentary, provided he'd be willing to come here and sit with me so I could interview him on my channel. And to, to, to his credit, to Logan's credit, he agreed, and he agreed that nothing would be off limits, and he also encouraged me to challenge him. He, he, he wanted it to be an honest and hard interview. So those are the circumstances surrounding it. That's how it came to be. And it, it's now been a full week since I did the interview. And to be totally honest, I wasn't sure, I'm still not sure if releasing it is the right thing. I, I harbor a lot of self-doubt about maybe I was too easy on him. I mean, maybe I was, was too argumentative with him. Um, I, I, the thing that I hope to learn, my very specific intention with this interview was to see if he was sincere about what he's trying to accomplish with this documentary or if the whole thing's just a charade for good PR. And now after like watching this interview over and over and over, I still, I don't know. I, there's a little bit of me that thinks maybe I'm enabling Logan. He and I have known each other for years. We've always been friendly. And um, by putting this on my channel, Am I now part of the machine to re rehabilitate his image? It's not what I want to do. That is not my intention, but could this be viewed as that? I, I don't know. So I, I hope that this interview will help the community better understand why he did the really stupid things that he did. And if he's now truthful and sincere about wanting to have a positive impact on the platform, the platform that he and his really stupid, really terrible decisions and actions did so much damage to. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm releasing it. And this video is not monetized. This video is also not edited. This is the entire 30 minute conversation that I had with Logan Paul one week ago. So let me start, I just wanna ask, what is this documentary? Yeah, so um, I mentioned it on one of my vlogs and there's been a lot of speculation on what people think it is. The doc is not a, it's not a documentary about how dang hard my life has been this year. It's about the story of a young man from Ohio, a, a seemingly regular kid, being me of course, falling into the social media machine over the past four years, building an audience, um, garnering false power through views, which equates to money, which equates to, again, success, and then essentially losing it all overnight, becoming the most hated man in the world in the snap of a, of a finger. So the question that the doc answers is how, how do you recover from that? Can you recover from that? Me sitting you with you right now, I'm in the journey right now with you. Like, will, is it possible for Logan Paul to make a comeback? Or am I gonna be a failed YouTuber and fall and crawl into a hole like half the world wants me to do? Is, is, you know, just ask, ask directly, is this a fluff piece to make people feel better about Logan Paul? No, no, not at all. This, it's, it's, if, 
from making content throughout the years, I try to be as unbiased as possible. And when you say fluff piece, like what? Cause like a bullshit video. It's just like, look, I, you should feel bad. Here's a way to characterize it. Is the video about how you've learned to better empathize with others, or is the video about making it easier for people to sympathize with you? Um, I don't, I don't think people should, can, or will sympathize with me. Let's be honest, Casey. Like, what I did, it. There's no distracting people. There's no. Well, here's what I tried to do, and this is why it's okay. There's none of that. It's an unbiased, objective story that captures how something like that can happen and what, what went wrong in my life that I thought that was a good idea. Because at the end of the day, I'm the one who has to look in the mirror and say, that was my decision. And that's, that's a hard thing to do is even like, hard talking about it right now with you because up until that point in my life, I, I, it was really only wins. It was only success. It was only consistent growth and, and everything was going so well. And I got so caught up with my actions being validated by millions of people. I forgot to be a human being in that situation and instead decided to be a content creator. And that's where I messed up. Do you, it's hard, even in there, there's a little, even in that response, uh, there was like, maybe I'm being cynical, but there's a little whiff of it sounding like you see yourself in some capacity as a, as a victim. No, I, no, by, by no means am I the victim here. And I guess it's, it's sort of tough because I, I wanna make it very clear, I am, I am not the victim here by no means, and everything I say I do need to not word it like that because I'm, I'm not the victim. What I'm not afraid to do though is be vulnerable about this and open up and say by no means, by no means, I know what I did was disgusting. It was, it was wrong. It was a, an extreme obviously lapse in judgment like I've said, but by no means am I, am I the victim or, or claiming to be the victim. Do you, would you characterize this as a, a redemption story? It's an attempted redemption story, is what it is. That's, it, are we still talking about the doc? Yeah, the doc. I mean, that's what it is. That's what, like, again, it, will I come back? I say yes, that's what, that's what the doc is about. That's what the story is. Is it not, how long has it been since the um, seven months, seven six months? months? Yeah. Is it not? Is it not premature? Like, before you can tell a redemption story, there has to be an act of redemption. True. So what is that? What is that? What has the act of redemption been for Logan Paul? It's, it's not been done yet. That's what the doc is about. And like, again, this whole, the whole idea of the, Jesus Christ, New Dude, York there's the Harley dealer. This, <laughs> this is crazy. It's fine. The whole, the whole idea of the doc is, is like, I, we, have, we don't have plans for it. We don't plan on like profiting off it. If, if we, if for whatever- Are you gonna monetize it? If, I don't know, I, I don't know. Cause what we wanna do, I've, I've told stories my whole life through a lens, as have you. So the thought process is why, why let someone else make that story? Cause someone's gonna wanna make that story. People have wanted to make that story. Why let someone else do it when I could just do it myself? And I know that if we do decide to monetize it, 100% of the proceeds will go to some sort of suicide prevention awareness program because that's that's essentially what this whole thing is about um, Are you are you a different person now than you were? Yeah Absolutely, oh, okay, absolutely. So then let me follow that up by because I've heard you say that yeah. How have you demonstrated that how have you not just said but what have you done to demonstrate that and I go even sharper in saying that like a lot of your content, uh, I think the suicide video that you came out with, your first video back, yeah. really demonstrated what your channel's capable of in talking about something bigger than just Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. 
But there hasn't been much since then. There hasn't been much that's demonstrated you're a different person. You talked about positivity and being a different person and changing the structure of the channel. And then it was days later, you're shooting a dead mouse. So yeah. what, what have you done to demonstrate you've changed as a person? The rat, the rat was, rat. yeah, the rat was, that was me becoming obsessed with the idea of being a villain. When, when the whole world hates you, I, just, I, I made the conscious decision, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the guy they think I am. And I essentially became the architect of my own destruction because I wanted to be who they thought. I thought, I, I might as well adopt this, adopt this, screw it. And Wasn't that a direct contradiction to everything you had just put out about how you're changing and how you're a different person? Yeah. Those videos were it, inside of a week. Yeah, I know, but it to me, while I can still be a good person, I'm also still was, possibly am, the guy who takes things to extremes. That's I mean that's that's who I am. That's the brand of Logan Paul. It's the fastest, the biggest, the best, the greatest, and. Right, and it's that that led you to the, I mean, that's how you started this. Interview. Exactly, I mean, that's, that's, everything is to the extreme, right? So if I can make content, and I have been for four years, for four years making people laugh, smile, believe in themselves, making them believe that they can accomplish their goals even if they're from a small town in Ohio. Because I made these mistakes, yes, I'm going to demonstrate more empathy and more compassion, but at the same time, I still have my brand and what's authentic to me is that brand of living life on the edge. Do you understand? I, I, I do, but I think it's sort of a convenient umbrella to hold over everything. So I think it, it's noble when you talk about motivating people. I think it's, it's, I think it's a noble ambition to want to inspire and motivate people, especially someone like how you characterize yourself and coming from being a normal guy. Yeah. But I think that like to use that same um, to use that same pretext as sort of justification for you know killing a rat or well I didn't kill the rat. Th those circumstances around that video or some of the other more controversial, sensational things you've done, yeah. running around Japan wearing silly outfits, um, yeah, so that being insensitive to culture, that's all part of the same. Can I just can I can I I want to I want to address this because. I'm not gonna lie, this is the, the hardest thing about all this is I think being perceived as culturally insensitive. Um, as far as the outfits go, they were on sale at a store right next to the temple that we were at for tourists. Do we not buy the outfits? I don't know, they're on sale there. Um, and then deeper, I mean, that's we, we could dive into the specifics of what happened. There's a difference between culturally insensitive and insensitive. The brand that I was at the time was just all around insensitive. And that's the person who I am no longer trying to become and will no longer represent on the vlogs. And, uh, and you think that that has been the case with your content since that moment till now? Or is this looking ahead? This, okay, so it's, it's this is looking ahead, yes. But, because you're right, it's like I, I said those things and then you go and tase a dead rat. What the fuck, what happened? Did you just contradict everything? And the answer is, again, like you said, yes, that's why it's hard for me because how, how many times can you say one thing and then try to be a better person? But truly now it's like, I'm vegan now. Um, I got a girlfriend who is extremely wise and she helps me grow and become the person I want to become. Um, my content is focused more on positivity and doing what you want to do to achieve your goals, which is, all, like I said, it's always been that. But all that stuff is overlooked when you make mistake or Well, I think that the sensationalism clouds that. It's like a, an eclipse. If, 
if that mission, which again I do think is noble, mo wanting to motivate, I don't, I don't even want to say. It, I, but when a moon comes in front of it, and that moon is a moon of sensationalism that is harmful, <clears throat> it clouds out. It completely blacks what, out. What's what's harmful? Um, I mean, I think like the <clears throat> the general sort of disrespectfulness that comes along with that kind of sensationalism. True. True. I think that certainly everything that sort of precipitated the suicide force incident. True. I think that the you know like the the tasing of the rat and myriad other, just kind of the general attitude that you characterize as living on the edge. I think really clouds a lot of that much more uh, much more meaningful ambition of wanting to inspire. True. But True. look, I think this is a good dovetail for a bigger question that's that's that you and I both identify with, which is that like the pressure of being a YouTuber, of being a daily vlogger, of uploading every single day, of having yeah. to maintain that audience, get more views so you can get paid to keep it going, the focus on relevancy, the focus on the biggest channel today, the most subscribers today, like there are pressures that come along with that where you get this tunnel vision. tunnel vision yeah and that's why you know in 2016 I stopped vlogging I remember you you texted me the day I stopped vlogging because I felt like I went to a place where I was so caught up in that that I was full of shit well I was gonna ask you one question I had yeah, for you please. have you ever found yourself in a place where you are being influenced by your success rather than your creativity and did that lead to your demise because that's what happened to me well, I, I, I would probably push back at the idea that I've had a demise, but certainly it contributed to my not wanting to, to daily vlog. I yeah. stopped and asked myself, like, why am I doing this? And I was caught up in that tidal wave. Yeah. And that's when I was like, fuck it, I don't want to do it anymore. And it's now my work is much more about creative motivation. And it's much less about, like, I don't care about views. Fighting for relevancy doesn't make sense. I don't care about that. Um, but I do want to back up. So I asked this question because I want to understand where your head was. Mm -hmm. um, before you went into that forest. I don't want to beat that dead horse. You've said a lot about that. You've been open about that. But I do want to understand, like, where was your brain leading? Uh, where, where, where was the thought process leading up into that? Um, are, you t are you talking about the day of? The, the day event, of and or, just the general, like, up. you were riding a wave that I, I think no one in the history of YouTube had ever been on. They, they haven't. That's why so when I Why sit, did it take you there? When I sit here and say that every day we were creating a new piece of content meant to bend the limit push it right up to the edge be entertaining be funny be positive spread a message we got so caught up in creating that we did not stop to think about what we were making and whether or not it was right because if you make it you put it out we were on autopilot essentially which is, it's, it's extremely dangerous when you're broadcasting to an audience of five to seven million people every day. And so there was no thinking. There was, it was create content, create content, create content, not, okay, hey, take a step back, slow down, breathe. So the Time model, to be a so human being. So where does being. that meet this mission of wanting to inspire and motivate? Like, do you believe that or is that bullshit? Because if that's, if that mission is the same as this, this momentum, this autopilot, how, where's the distinction between wanting to do good and wanting to, you know, looking for sensationalism that will drive clicks? I'm not, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, I, I also do want to say, I, I'm not, while, I, while the underlying mission is always that you can, you should, you achieve, it's okay to be different. It's, I'm not, that's not what my channel is entirely about. It's a combination of that and it, it is entertainment. It's lighthearted comedy, essentially, that's what it is. I, I just what, I just the, see those two things in conflict with one another. Essentially, yeah, and that's why I'm a brand. That's that's who Logan Paul is because I do bridge the gap between being like a motivational speaker for kids and standing on a stage in front of 300 people, but also like, hey, I am a fucking kid. I'm 23 years old, 22 years old at the time, and if I want to go jump out of a plane naked, I'm gonna fucking do it. But at the same time, you can work hard. And achieve your right, goals. I don't think anybody do ever, you want to do. I don't think anybody ever faulted Logan Paul for jumping out of a plane naked. No, that's what I'm saying. But I could give you a list of like, I I jumped off a bridge into uh, the river in Italy. Is that culturally insensitive? Is saying "Mamma Mia" in Italy culturally insensitive? I don't. I would argue that it's just insensitive. No, but jumping on the hood of a car in Japan isn't culturally insensitive. It, it is. 
Yeah, absolutely. Jump, jumping on the hood of a car in Japan is culturally insensitive. Dressed as a Pokemon throwing a Pikachu at the car, I, I absolutely think that's Why do you think that's insensitive? insensitive? Well, I mean... Culturally, culturally insensitive. I, I think that's insensitive, but the fact that it's being pinpointed to, to be culturally insensitive, when I do that shit did, did that shit everywhere, that's hard for me. That's hard for me to hear and listen to. I mean, without getting into too much nuance, you're, the culture of Pokemon is very much um, woven into the culture of Japanese culture. Yeah. Um, you were dressed up as a character from a Japanese uh, um, pop culture. You were dressed as a Japanese pop culture sort of icon as Pikachu. So, like, I do think that there is a, a connection there. But, um, but, Casey, they sell the outfits in Japan. I understand. I understand. I do you, Casey? Because it sounds like I, I, do, I, don't ag I don't agree with you. But I understand. I don't agree with me. I want to make that clear. I don't. I don't agree with me or think what I did was right. I'm just saying there's a difference between being culturally insensitive, insensitive towards a culture, and overall insensitivity, which is what the old Logan Paul had an issue with and had a problem with and is now, today, what I'm working to not do ever again. I just think you were both of those things. Um, okay, okay, but, okay. But let me ask, you took a month off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, Talking about that autopilot, that momentum, and I get that, dude. I was been I've been there. Um, how did that month off help you empathize and understand both the criticism coming at you, which was like insane, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. And then how did that, like, what did you learn in that month off? Sorry, I'm waiting for the thing. So <clears throat> during the month off. It was a lot of meeting, talking to, visiting. I actually came to New York for a couple of days. Suicide prevention organizations, organizations um, about mental health and finding out what it, what it truly is like to have suffered from depression or know someone with depression or even know someone that has uh, died by suicide. Because I, well, and it's, just, it's just madness. So this is crazy, bro. It's New York. Sorry, the sirens here at the office are just unbearable. Um, this is why I have that monitor up there. Oh, damn. Oh, so you can see when they're passing? Dude. I mean, I have hours of footage of me just cursing the world. Um, but yeah, yeah, continue. You, t you, you did. You invested time in meeting with people. Yeah. And, and to this day, to this day, the guy who was uh, in my um, suicide Be Here Tomorrow video, Kevin Hines, I, I text him every single day. Um, and we we want to do something together in the in the future. Obviously, I'm focused on this fight right now. That's my number one mission. Um, but the month off was a step for me to once again become a human being and forget about views, money, success, and clout. And it was a chance for Logan Paul to be like, oh, okay, this this. This is why this is wrong because I, I had never been, like I said in the video, affected by suicide. I don't know. I sure. didn't. I didn't know what it what it means to know some or lose someone who has died by suicide. So it was an attempt for me to discover that and once again, like I said a million times right now, become an actual human being. And after after that video dropped, I guess it's like did it, did it give you an appreciation for the. Because that video, I think, had a very important message behind it. it was a, I, I like that video. I tweeted that I like that video, and Thank I got you. shit for it. Thank you. Um, but did it show you sort of, did it demonstrate to you that your channel is capable of so much more, and your reach is capable, and your voice is capable of so much more than just sensationalism and views? Yes. But I, but I, I don't want to say I didn't know that. I just was doing the wrong thing with, with that capability. I, was, I wasn't putting out PSAs like that. It's, it's the most viewed anti-suicide um, PSA ever. And it was groundbreaking for me to realize it's, it is possible for me to create a piece of content that can change that many lives. I will say what we did in that video was the attempt with the forest video. Beginning, middle, and end, I made it very clear that it is okay to feel ostracized and alone what's not okay is holding those feelings in and that i truly believe quote unquote that every person has a place on this on this earth but we did that in such the wrong way we tried to shock it into people versus showing and demonstrating yeah, and, yeah, it's and hard, telling it's anecdotes. hard to believe that 
that's what the suicide forest video was about when you guys are laughing and smiling and just the, the thing that bothered me the most about the video was your excitement Ex excitement the, you were excited to have found a a, 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 hu a dead body not not really and this is this is this is when I watched it that was the emotion that I was that I that I took you, you, from you and your posse you guys okay. felt like We've got something here that's going to get us views. At the beginning of the video, it was like something you've never seen on YouTube before. That is what affected me the most okay. about that video because I understand that mission and I do think your, your suicide video really accomplished that. But if, I mean, if you're going to conflate the two, then I just have to, I have to tell you why I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that conflation. Okay. Um, okay. But let's, let's, I want to hear about, I want to talk about the fight. What, what is the fight? You're fighting KSI. Sorry, dude. It's just your it's, brother's it's, fighting. You don't want to move on. You, there's it, more you want to no, say. No, it's just because yeah, I, the laughing is it's a defense mechanism for me. That's what it sure, is. I've heard you say that. Do you believe it? Um, I believe it when you're saying it, but I don't believe that you expect people the 8 million people that saw the video before it was taken out to understand within those contexts that you were just laughing as a defense mechanism. Like, I, I think that there's, there's intent and, and then there's, there's actuality. And there's a saying, it's like the, the road to hell is paved in intent. Because if, if all that really matters is what transpired and what transpired is you and your, your peers, your friends, laughing and snickering and, and making light of a human being who had died and I think that your intent in that moment is fucking irrelevant. All I see is what's actually transpiring. I tried to move on from this and talk about the boxing match. <laughs> I just, I, I know, I just... I understand. I'm, I'm, it's, it's hard for me to, to listen to someone to my face tell me that I was laughing at the, the guy. I'm telling you how how it. I, how, I understand I'm you my perspective. I understand. I just I maybe dealt, I'm unique. No, you're not. You're not unique. You you do represent the voice of the people, which is what I'm learning to, I guess, be vulnerable about. I just like it was never my intent to come off like I was laughing or joking about suicide. I I said suicide's not a joke three times in the video. Because it's it's clearly not. I, I never thought it was. I just use comedy when I'm uncomfortable or I don't know what to do when there's a lens on me and my actions are essentially being validated by five to seven million people and no one around around me is telling me, hey, that's not okay. I understand that. I understand. I just... Excuses never validate the action. Truth, truth. So and, your and, excuses and, may be valid, but it doesn't excuse the action. Does not at all. And I'm, like I said, ashamed, deplorable mistake. And the only thing that I want to do right now is show that that video was not a representation of who I am, who I will become and who I want to be. I appreciate that. Can we talk about the fight now? Yeah, sure, we can talk about <laughs> Are the these fight. Are these rolling? Because these turn off after 30 minutes. You keep an eye on them? I've got an eye on this one. <clears throat> um, what, is, what is, you're fighting KSI. What is the it's fight? It's true. What is the fight? I'm gonna beat his ass. I'm a big boxer. I've been boxing for like 12 years. I don't like to step into the ring because I don't want to get hit. I value my brain too much. But you, if all but, I had to rely on was this face, Logan, I wouldn't go very far. I, okay. need, I need the brain too okay, much. Okay. What is this fight? Um, Why I, is this happening? Es essentially, KSI, he called me out. He called my brother out, and uh, I accepted the fight. Uh, I'm always up for a challenge. I thought, honestly, for me, having that event happen in January, this was a way to step back from the world of YouTube and stop worrying about the views, the money, the clout. All that shit went down. I haven't grown on Instagram and six months, literally at all, um, and focus my efforts on something else so I can become a different guy. This is like the boxing win for me is showing people that even if you fail, even if you get knocked to the ground, even if, if you feel like you're at the lowest point of your life, you can get up and do something and still win. 
do you think that the fight is part of the redemption story? Do you see the fight as part of yeah, the redemption? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because it's, it's not about a fight. It's not about the boxing match itself. Like I said, it's about being able to get hit in the face, whether they're a result of your own actions or not. In my case, they are. I'm the one who fucked up. But I'm willing to say, okay, this is the mistake I made. I'm going to keep my chin up. I'm going to keep moving forward. No matter how many people want me to crawl in a hole and die forever, I'm not going to do that. You can fail and still come back and still keep on going and still win. So, your Jake, um, Deji, KSI, they've been cranking out content every day. Yeah. It's like trash talking. I've seen them at the press conferences just being vicious. They've just been nonstop. And with the exceptions, it feels like you've been a little bit more reserved. Yeah. Um, including like the press conference in, in London where after KSI just really got gnarly with his, um, you know, with, with, his, with his verbal exchange, like he, he went to a really crazy place, you just kind of got up and walked out. Is this, is this you being like frustrated or is this part of the new Logan Paul? It's the new Logan Paul. It's, I, I have no interest in bantering back and forth with someone who is the exact person that I'm trying not to become and stray away from by degrading woman, by going after my family in a, in, in a manner that is intended to harm. He's, I, I, don't, I don't have any interest in that. The, the goal for me here is to beat him on August 25th, not talk about how I'm gonna beat him, not talk about his family, or talk about what I'm gonna to do to his girlfriend. The goal is to win a fight. And I just, I, I was over it. Like, I, I, as soon as I walked in the press conference, I was like, okay, this, I'm just over the talk, Casey, to be honest. It's all, it's all Fugazi, it's Fugazi. It's time to fight, <laughs> there's fight words right there. Um, all right, and then I, I guess like a big question I have for you is like, I don't know how to say this without, there's a lot of like, a lot of the YouTube community was upset after a lot of your, you know, the negativity around Logan Paul because yeah. they thought you sort of besmirched what it meant to be a YouTuber. Yeah, and right, rightfully so. I, yeah. I guess it's like, what, what do you say to that? How do you respond to that? How, is there a response for that? Um, I mean, to, to my fellow creators, like, wholeheartedly, I mean, I, I apologized already, but I, I am sorry that I, I guess, brought shame upon the platform, is if that's how I want to word it, that's why I say, I guess, that's why I have to be so careful with, like, how I talk, but that's, that's obviously not the person who I want to become or live in the body of for the rest of my life, and just like I made a mistake, I promise... I will do the community well and keep my head up and keep on trucking and bring light to YouTube. But obviously, Casey, it's, it's horrible to see your peers. Sure. And, and rightfully so because of my own actions. Like, I, I just felt bad. And again, I apologize for it. And I'll apologize for it a thousand times. I don't want to sit here and be a sob story for the rest of my life. So, uh, so then, and, and this will, this will, I want to end it with this, but... I want to ask what's next for Logan Paul, but I want to ask within the context of like understanding your um, resume now has some 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 dirty marks on it. Understanding that you you carry this baggage and there's no getting rid of it. Where do you go from here in the world of me? What's your where does where do you want to be in ten years and how are you going to accomplish that? Having to lug around these um, you know the, these chains forever. <clears throat> I think Hollywood. I think uh, America in general is, it's, they love redemption stories. They, it's, it's a story for me, my life is now a story about someone who is winning, someone who self imploded and was, like I said, the architect of their own destruction and struggle and vulner vulnerability. And now it's, being able to say this is a part of my life and I want to become better 
I don't want to let my mistakes define me. I think a person is defined by how they recover from their mistakes. And what's next for me is honestly probably just content creation, businesses. I can answer this question with a hundred things, but all that fucking matters to me right now is the fight. August 25th. Get your tickets. Link in bio. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing this entire interview without yeah. plugging your merch once. At <laughs> shop. Um, Be a baby. <laughs> no, no, I, I, do, I do appreciate your frankness, and I appreciate... Um, Logan didn't see any of my questions beforehand. I didn't bring any of this up, so I... I Thanks for doing a straight interview. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Casey. Thank you.